All right. Let's in, talk what, in what year, though? Uh, well, that was before the Union, 1930. We're going to talk Robert Mitchum. Robert Mitchum was a songwriter when he came to Hollywood. And uh, uh, William Boyd, who was Hopalong Cassidy, uh, saw this guy shoveling manure. He was getting like 25 cents a day to shovel manure in the horse barn because he had a family. Songwriting wasn't getting him anything, and acting wasn't making him money. Like he, you know, he came and he said, "How would you like to uh, to make $150 a week?" You know, and basically, you know, shovel, of course, you know, <laughs> or go make a movie. I'll, I'll do that, you know. But, a lot easier than the that's other. That's right. But uh, uh, you know, like Hop guy, William Boyd played Hop along cash. They don't think never made more than twenty, thirty thousand dollars in one year. Uh, I have a relative. The, that uh, basically was the Durango kid. He made like 150 Durango kids and never made much more than a couple of thousand dollars on every show. And that's because the, that's what the union was created for because there was a massive inequity between what the companies were making. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, Jack O'Warner was once making ungodly amounts of money charging a nickel apiece for people to come to his theaters. Mm -hmm. his, you know, he told us his philosophy was he didn't care what race they were you know, what what anything they were, just as long as I could get their nickel. So that's why they called them Nickelodeons to begin with. Are you serious? That's, that's right. Nickelodeon? That was why they got the name Nickelodeon, because they went into the theaters with their nickels. And um, But they were making ungodly amounts of movies. I mean, it, it, was, it took forever for an actor to get to where they made $100,000 on a film. Wow. Well change now. Some, some of them are getting $20 million okay. paydays, the, but it, the, it's very it, rare. It's very rare, but it is the inequity between the people. Okay, uh, I think you can still get, you know, uh, actors are making like $600 to $1,000 a day if they're featured, or they're, they'll give them a flat sum to come in and do something, or like actors can make $70, $80 a day, but there's still a, a huge gap between the people here and the people at the top, you know, but um, they're, you know, it, the, the problem is that the people at the top are the ones putting it at the top. When you're at the top, you don't you you tend to forget that once you were down there, and that's why the guys at the top, you know, Jack Nicholson is a nice guy, but I don't see Jack Nicholson giving any of that twenty million dollars he makes a movie back to those little guys underneath him. Same way with Julia Roberts. I don't, Jack Nicholson doesn't make that much movie now. If he wants, he can make it. He doesn't want to work. That's why, oh. he, puts a, that's why he puts a figure out there that's so oh, high. Oh, I see. You put a figure out that you know that nobody will pay so that you won't work. He's done deliberately not to work. But the guys that are at the top, that are, that are the ones forcing the strike, are the ones making the ungodly amounts of money because they want to make more money. They do understand the future. They understand the future uh, you know, is not the in... that are in the future. It's not in now for the internet, it's in the future. But if you shoot yourself, okay, basically, unfortunately, most of the people that are demanding a strike by the Screen Actors Guild are all supporters of the Democratic Party. And Hubert Humphrey uh, was famous for saying that Democrats get, when Democrats try to make a decision, they form themselves in a circle and shoot each other, shoot each other in the foot. That's how they make decisions in the Democratic Party. This is exactly the, the Hubert Humphrey definition of how the Screen Actors Guild is being handled now. There are things that you can win without any battle. You know, reshooting of a movie to make it into Blu-ray, that is a winnable position because yep. the courts will side with them the on that. courts will side with them on that. So that they, they, they theoretically should be given the entire amount of money they were paid for originally to reshoot the movie. But now those are for movies that were not shot in high definition before, yep. and they're being reshot for high definition. That's why when you see movies that are available on Blu-ray, you're yep. going, "But Blu-ray didn't exist when that movie was created." Yeah, and then uh, we were at the it. we were at the Home Economic uh, Home Eco <laughs> Home the, Media Expo home in Las Vegas, and we the heard Electronic Merchants Electronic Association. Association. We had people on a panel. They were all there. They were paid to be there to plug something that they weren't making any money off of. So they were basically paid for an appearance fee. They're, they've got an appearance fee, like uh, I think like Peter Brown said, which may be on one of the things we've cut. You know, it would be nice if we actually got paid for doing the things we did on the DVDs. But that wasn't covered in those days, so all they because got was Because that was done many years ago. That's right. I mean, like, uh, 
they can get paid. Uh, you know, there, there was nothing that covered that. And then DVDs are actually listed different than video. So if they were paid for the video, they reconverted it to DVD. They should be getting paid again, but they're actually not. Those are winnable things. I mean, you've got to stand on the side of the poor little guy, you know, like the 75-year-old Robert Fuller, the 72-year-old Peter Brown, that basically are being given a shaft by people. But they're not the ones, you know, that, that anybody cares about. They care about the guy that's going to make, you know, the $20 million. It, it's all about the guy at the top, it's not about the guy at the bottom. And if you look at the trade papers, the trade papers will also tell you that it, the union isn't being ran for the benefit of little guys, being ran for the benefit of the people upstairs at the moment. Which ah, means so in, in a way it's doing what it was intended to do in the first place. That's right. It's, it's, which was to protect everybody. It was to protect everybody, child. but the problem is with the, okay, people run unions. And people have a tendency, I mean, the, uh, the best laid plans of mice and men often go astray. You can start out with Ronald Reagan and Alan Mulberry and others, uh, you know, started out with the most honorable ideas for the union. And then people got involved. And then people got involved. Like our Constitution in like the United Constitution. States. <laughs> it's just, you know, <laughs> like, you know, it's just like you, you, know, you put a whole bunch of you know, people, elected officials in one room and you have a rabble. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, the union, if it did what it was supposed to do, couldn't lose. That's the whole trick. If it did what it was supposed to do, they would have so much support they could not lose. People want better material put out there. People think that you should be paid fairly for the work that you've done. I mean, they don't think that, I mean, most people say basically screw the guy who's getting residuals. I mean, <laughs> but if you're going to turn something from one format into another format, that person deserves to be paid for that work and not being paid for it. So this is, you know, they're, they're, going, to, they're going to shoot everybody in the foot for something that is unnecessary. So we're hoping that whatever the case is, they settle it quickly. Yeah, I'm afraid though it won't. If it um, if it lasts into August, look for shows that you like, never come back on television again. Look for movies that you knew were going to be filmed being canceled. So, so I mean, I, I, I know right now that uh, Quentin Tarantino is talking about Brad. They got to do the Quentin Tarantino is going to do the Dirty Dozen again, folks. He is. Yeah. Oh, it's called the. I think it's, in Quentin style. It's Quentin style. I think it's called the, uh, the inconceivable bastards. <laughs> you know, which you know. The, here, this plot: an offer, an American officer is sent to an Amer to a prisoner, uh, to uh, get a prisoner of war camp, or a prisoner of prison, to take a, a, a 12, 13 people that have death sentences and offer them the chance to survive if they do a mission. That's called the Dirty Dozen. If I, I've never seen the Dirty Dozen, so then I, know, I wouldn't yeah. make the connection. I know, <laughs> it's the Dirty Dozen. Brad Pitt is Brad Pitt is rumored to be one of the major stars in that one, but that's basically if there's a strike, don't bet on it because Aww. Tarantino will simply, you know, hit, okay, it's just like um, uh, Robert Rodriguez was supposed to do a television series, I think, based upon uh, characters that were in the, uh, the, you know, the Grindhouse movies. And because of the strike, that got axed. Ooh. You know, he lost a lot of money. Not only it got axed, it cost him Rose McGowan, his girlfriend, at the same time too, because okay, she was going to she, she was going to be this, she was at the time she was going to star in the series. So, well, she's but pretty uh, hot. this is exactly what happens. Projects that are in development will get canceled. A lot of people are going to get hurt. I mean, with us, you know, we're, we're news people. We'll keep you updated. Yeah. As to what we hear. Yeah, so in, until, you know, we'll know tomorrow what's going to happen, but until then, this is old camp. And not a spring chick. Coming to you with a long explanation of the Screen Actors Kills. Like, <laughs> Live, well, actually, our tape delay. Tape delayed, from yeah. From Southern California. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Oh, that was a good one. That's a three-parter. Well, you got rolling. I know. That was a good one.